what is up YouTube and today we're going to be talking all about the unit that you guys see on your screen here. ML Calric, Moonlight Calric, Mediator Calric, Mediocre Calric, or even Hand Guy, whatever you guys want to call him. But he is very, very powerful and is available actually from the Fallen Lands Moonlight Blessing. Meteor Calric is one of the best PvP units in the game while having many uses in PvE as well because of his ability to cleanse his entire team with his S3, with his attack buff and his immunity buff, and also while being able to combat readiness push his team very frequently and himself with his S1. He also has an S2 that can strip all buffs and also put a decreased attack on a unit and will also give a barrier to all your allies and the barrier will scale with your own max HP, which will be very, very thick because Meteor Calric is usually built on very high health. Now this unit, while having a lot of support capabilities, actually hits pretty decently hard. All of his skills scale with health, his S1 and S2 rather, because they are attacks, and he does a ton of damage. His S1 does pretty decent damage while also giving a lot of cycling to your team, but his S2 actually hits like a truck, even if you don't crit, if you have a ton of health. With about like 26, 27k HP, if you actually land your S2 on a squishy unit, you can do like 3k, 4k health of damage, which is pretty high if you do this on a damage dealing unit because it's gonna be about like 30, 40% of their HP. And you're also gonna be giving your team mitigation with that barrier and also crippling that damage unit with your S2. His S3 is really powerful because not only is it just a cleanse, attack buff and immunity for your team, but also gives him a CR push of 50% so you can follow up with your S2 or even your S1, but also, you can see that when this skill is available according to cooldown count, meaning if it's available and not on cooldown, you will decrease debuff duration of the caster by one turn. And this is very, very good because at the start of battle, if you're going against the Conqueror Ilias, if the Conqueror Ilias actually S2s you, if you'll get Conqueror Ilias as S2 and puts that redirect to provoke, it only lasts one turn. Similarly to something like a Bellion here that can S3 you at the start of battle, which is not likely, but unless you're facing a very fast Bellion, which is kind of what mine is on actually, you can actually get provoked for one turn. Another example, which is going to be like Spectre Tenebria, S3 can stun you for one turn. And even another example that's more commonly seen in Angel of Light Angelica, another thing that can silence you for one turn. And Meteor Calric, because of his built-in S3 decreased debuff duration when his S3 is available, you can actually build him on no effect resist and still be able to cleanse your team against most debuffs, which is why most people will build him on pretty low effect resist and actually just you know have him very fast, have him very tanky, and then if you go against the unit that debuffs you, you just S3 because you can't really be CC'd unless you get hit with like a two second stun by like something like a I Winter or something like that, or unless you get your cooldowns reset. If you actually look on your screener, you're gonna see he is the sixth most played unit in World Arena and RTA. And his win rate is pretty decent at 51.22%. Now, it isn't the highest compared to something like Navy Captain Landy or something like a Conquerlius or SC Arrowell, but it's still decently high at 51.22. And anything above 50%, honestly, is a pretty good unit. And it's mostly because Meteor Calric is pretty weak against Cleave. So he doesn't really have any CR pushing for himself, and he gets pretty cucked by a Restrict, which will stop his Warhorn cycling. And a lot of cleave units are very fast and will outspeed him, so it makes him pretty weak because he doesn't have any mitigation. But against just standard teams, he's very powerful. He has a lot of value in his S1 with the CR push for himself and his ally. And the fact that your S2 can cripple enemies very, very often because it's only a three turn cooldown and he cycles very fast, makes him a very powerful unit for people that like to play standard and not, like not to cleave. So very powerful unit, definitely a good unit to have. Honestly, it's going to be between him or Conquerlius for the Moonlight Blessing. I personally recommend Conquerlius, but a lot of people recommend Meteor Calric. It's really up to you. If you do pick Meteor Calric, though, you definitely want to build him on a stat benchmark similar to mine. So there's a lot of ways to actually build him, and mine is very specific, but overall, most Meteor Calrics will be on Warhorn. So you can see for Warhorn here, it's going to be mostly used on Meteor Calric. You can see Warhorn is on 47% is on Meteor Calric, so yeah, you can see that it's very good on him because it gives everyone attack buff, and also the best part is that at the end of every three enemy turns, you will cut by 20% CR, which is very good for cleansers, and it's just very good on Meteor Calric because the more turn cycling you get, not only do you have the opportunity to cut and cleanse your team, you can also cut the enemy and S1 and then boost an ally as well, surprising the enemy and taking them off guard. So pretty powerful artifact on him, definitely his best artifact by far. And for build, you want him on speed set for sure. The secondary set, I highly, highly recommend immunity. It is very, very good on Meteor Calric. Otherwise, something like a health set would work as well. 
Now for general stats guys, most people will run him at around 220, 230, up to 250 speed with everything else into health and a bit of defense as well with a priority into health because he does scale with health. Some people like to actually build ER on him or even effectiveness to actually help his S2 strip units like Lionheart Sermia who will actually get an effect resist buff with their S2 proccing and this will make it so you can, you can actually strip the Lionheart Sermia of her S2 and her defense buff but overall generally you're going to see meter characters on a similar stat guideline to mine. Now some people do like to build their meter calcs faster, I can make mine 250-260 speed, works very very well, but I have him at 222 speed or 220 speed because I want him to be slower than Angel of Lights, because I have him mostly as an Angel of Light counter. Most Angel of Lights will run between 220 to 260 to even 280 speed, and if your meter calc goes before Angel of Light, what can happen is your meter calc has to skip his S3 because you want to save it for Angel of Light's S3, and then Angel of Light just S3s your entire team, they cannot take a turn, and you kind of just missed out on, on a lot of value. So for that reason, I have him on a slower build to guarantee that he always will go after the enemy Angel of Light Angelica. Really up to you though on how you want to use him, you can never go wrong making him faster, honestly it's fine even if he goes before Angel of Lights. It ends up being a stalemate battle anyways, but he does get more value out of his S1 over Angel of Light for the most part, so usually he'll end up winning the trade. Very very powerful unit for PvP and RTA. And also very good in PvE, especially for areas of content such as like Ancient Inheritance, and also Nightmare Raid if you actually need a cleanser against like Julie's Council, he's okay. And also just very good in general because he has that attack buff for your team. Now if you actually do pull for his concentration or his imprint release, you definitely want to make sure it's on the release because yeah, memory imprints on him are very good because the attack buff for your entire team is just extremely, extremely powerful especially because he also has an ability to buff the attack of your team, and also because most people don't run him on effect resist anyways. If you do build him on effect resist though, this concentration can be good, but like I said, wouldn't really recommend it unless you're using him for a specific reason, such as against like Faithless Lydica if you want to build him on a high ER build to try to resist the cooldown reset, or even against like a Lua, then you can build him on high ER, but for the most part, it's just way better to have him on a tankier build that's faster than invest sub stats into effect resist, in my opinion. One of the best units in the game by far for PvP. Highly contested in World Arena and RTA. You can use him very, very often in Guild Wars offense. He's very good in Arena offense for a lot of auto teams because he has that cleanse, he has that attack buff, he has a ton of CR pushing. The only thing he really lacks as a support or just as a unit in general is healing, but you don't really need healing on him because, yeah, he does have a barrier for your team and it's not really his job to heal for the most part. He just does so much for your allies and he's just going to do a ton of work for your PvP roster. If you guys have him and you don't have him built, you definitely want to build him ASAP. Maxing out all his skills with Molagora is a very good option because you want his S3 to be on very short cooldown. His S2 hits like a truck, and his S1 also hits decently hard as well. Uh, the only thing you don't really have to max out is, is his S1. I recommend getting this to plus 4, but everything else you definitely want to max out because the damage goes up and the barrier strength will go up for his S2, and his cooldowns will also go down as well. Hopefully this video helped you guys out in building your Meteor Carrot, guys. Build him now, he's so powerful, and I'll see you guys in the next video.